See how Tanium empowers the ServiceNow help desk experience with real-time data and remediation. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone, and welcome to our new series on integration with ServiceNow. Every help desk specialist relies on timely, accurate data to triage and close tickets. And today you're going to see how Tanium supplies not only real-time data, but also enables real-time remediation actions without leaving the ServiceNow console. Now, following this episode, ServiceNow and Tanium admins can also watch how to configure what we did in these demos for themselves. I've got two full walkthrough videos to show you how to set this up in your environment. And so these videos are going to cover one for the CMDB and ITAM and the other one for the ITSM or what we call the CI Introspect UI. So those are linked in the show notes below. So you can check those out following if you'd like to be able to set this up in your own environment. So I've invited our guest expert today, Brandon Wolf. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Tell us about your background in IT service management. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. Happy to be here. Um, I've been working with Tanium for just over three years now, based out of New York City. Uh, and I work on our strategic partnerships team focused on our partnership with ServiceNow in particular. So um, the vast majority of my career has been spent in the IT service management and IT asset management space, um, and particularly focused on enabling help desk users in particular to reduce their time to investigate, reduce their time to remediate, and just create a better experience both for agents and for end users working on a help desk. That's exactly what we're after today. We want to start this series aimed at the help desk operator experience because that's where we put so much time in these integrations. And we got a lot more to come, other topics as well, but this is where we're starting today. So uh, what are some of the challenges for help desk operators today? Yeah, so I, I think it starts with just completeness and accuracy of data. Um, not only understanding in the context of I have an instant or I have a request and I need to see what's happening on a device right now so that I'm able to actually come in and do my investigation and remediation, but being able to trust that the data that I'm presented with is in fact accurate. If I'm looking to resolve somebody's incident and I'm looking at data that's potentially hours old, it may actually cause more issues when I try to remediate this as opposed to if I'm looking at data that's a few seconds old. So reducing the amount of time of wasteful actions, which again, just creates a better experience for the agent and for that end user. I think another unique value prop here is that we're using the one tool because so often you have to jump through so many other tools and that takes a lot of time and we don't have a lot of time. And so if we, if we do some of the, we're not going to do everything there, but we can handle a lot of things right out of the one interface without even going in to see Tanium. And that's, what's going to be interesting here. I, I can't wait for people to see this. How has Tanium solved this challenge, Brandon? What we've done is we've taken a lot of the capabilities that any user of Tanium has access to and put them into service now for those users who may not live inside of Tanium. In fact, you may have agents who don't even have access to Tanium or have never logged into the Tanium console, but they still need to have that real-time data and they need to be able to take action upon that real-time data, even if they don't understand the Tanium platform, but they're service now experts. So where do I get started here from the service now side? If I'm a help desk operator, somebody calls in, where do I start? Typically, you may start from an incident or from a service request, um, actually starting from a ticket that somebody has raised. Or another way we can come in is, I'm just going to go right into our CMDB. I'm going to come straight into the computer table, and I'm going to come in here and find a Tanium managed device. So let's go ahead. And I know that in my environment I'm connected to, there's a few devices that are online right now. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to select one of our machines that is connected to a live Tanium environment. This could happen directly from an incident if I wanted to look at the associated configuration item, or I can just go right here into the CMDB table. 
In this environment, this is a ServiceNow developer instance. Uh, I have not done any changes to the page layout. So for any viewers who are watching this, your view may look different. You may have different attributes within this layout. There is a lot of data that Tanium is syncing over that is not visible right here, simply because again, this is the out of the box view. But we could see some information around the operating system and the RAM and the CPU speed and manufacturer. There's a few things that I do want to note on here though. So this disk space right here is currently blank. And knowing the amount of disk space that's on a device is pretty important. But if we scroll down a little bit further, we have these tabs here where we can actually see that Tanium, when we are bringing in the data, we are following the common services data model, the CSDM in ServiceNow. So things like our network adapters with our network adapter information or our individual storage devices and the file systems that make up these storage devices. These are all actually created as their own CI records in the CMDB with relationships back to the hardware that they belong to. And same thing with software that's installed on here. So I can see all the software that's actually installed on this machine. And each of these software records is brought in as its own configuration item and associated back to that hardware. So that's something that's really important is not only do you want to have the data in place, but you want to make sure that the data is in the right place so that it's accessible by everyone, including the ServiceNow platform for purposes of automation or other modules that you may be leveraging in ServiceNow. And this is so helpful to know that all this is coming from Tanium multiple times per day. So I don't have to worry about this being stale data. It's accurate and it's fresh. Exactly. And in this environment, we're syncing this. I think I have it set to every three hours. So worst case scenario, if I'm an IT agent and I'm looking at this computer, the software information, the file system information, the network adapter information is worst case up to three hours out of date. Now, this next part, I can't wait for people to see it. There's a big bit, a big red button right there. This is Launch Tanium Live UI. I've got to ask, what does that do? Having data that is two, three hours out of date is a really good scenario for a lot of organizations. But if I'm looking at an instant or if I'm working on a problem, data that's 30 minutes out of date or even 10 minutes out of date is going to cause problems for me. I need to know what exactly is happening at this very moment on this device. So if I click on this bright red Launch Tanium Live UI, what it's actually going to do is it's going to open up another tab in ServiceNow where we're going to create a direct connection to this device to see data in real time. Right now, this is the exact computer that we were just looking at. Um, but we'll see here that my refresh time is currently set to every 30 seconds. And so if I wanted to actually reduce this, I have the ability to come in and change this to maybe every five seconds or 10 seconds. But 30 seconds is pretty good idea to know what is happening on here. So I can get some information again, stuff that's stored in the CMDB. What's the serial number? What's the operating system? But now we can see what is actually happening with our CPU and our RAM and our disk utilization. And we can see every 30 seconds it is updating. So we're getting the latest values of what is occurring on this device. And, if and we come clearly, down, we, I, I've got to say, clearly we can see the CPU is 100%. No wonder the user's calling in, right? Exactly, exactly. So just a, a quick view of my device is running slow or I can't launch applications. Well, if your disk utilization is at 100% or your RAM or your CPU, it's a really good indicator from a help desk agent perspective of, yes, there is in fact something that's happening on here. And it's not just a user reporting that their machine is slow simply because they've got 80 different Chrome tabs that are open and they're habitually slow on here. So this Couple stuff at the bottom looks really juicy. Uh, processes, services, it, it, it looks like task manager uh, remotely. This is beautiful. That's exactly it. So we can see, like in a task manager, all of the different processes that are currently running on here. And we get information about the processes and how much memory they're using and how long they've been active. And if there's a process that's causing problems in here, maybe a process that's taking up a lot of memory, I can come in here and I could actually kill this process with one button. 
Same thing with system services. I need to know what system services are running on here or not running. So I can see every single system service in the same fashion that you would see when looking at a task manager. I can see the startup mode on it and I can come in here to a stopped service and I could start it, for example. Or I could come into a service that's actively running and I could stop it or I could restart it. And one thing that's really cool about this is from an end user perspective, I don't even know that this is happening. I don't have to accept a remote connection. I don't have to schedule some time to do a screen share. This is all happening through a direct connection that's silent on the back end. And how many times all it takes sometimes on some of these common tickets that we see is restarting a service, uh, something like that, killing a process. We could already see there. These, this is really handy. Like you said, I don't have to launch a remote screen sharing session to do this. Now, one of the other benefits here that I'm really excited for people to see are these three buttons in the middle, because I think one of the values here is in the asset data, I'm going to see some things, but not all the things. And this is where we can uh, get other kinds of data real time about the endpoint. Absolutely. So not just seeing the data. Seeing the data is great, but how do we actually remediate an issue that is happening or keep our systems performing at their maximum values? So what I can do is I can come in here as an agent and, for example, I might want to execute an action. I could come in here and choose from any actions that have been made available in this ServiceNow environment that I have access to, such as forcing a policy refresh in SCCM, or running a disk cleanup, or even something as simple as I need to come in here and reboot this machine. As anybody who has worked on an IT help desk knows, oftentimes a reboot can resolve a lot of issues that are happening. So if I just wanna come in here and force something to reboot, I have the ability to do that directly from this action simply by hitting the execute button on here. Same thing with querying a sensor, which is really, really handy. I need to know information that maybe isn't stored directly in the CMDB because we need to know what's happening at this very moment, not data that's cached as of a few minutes or a few hours ago. So something like, what are the bit locker details on here? So if I run this query sensor, this is going to just pull back all of my BitLocker detail information. Now, Brandon, oh. wait a minute. That, that was really fast. So I, I want people to understand this is happening by Tanium in the background. You're not seeing the Tanium console. You're staying in service now, and we're getting real live data off that endpoint right now. That that just <laughs> – I, I know I work for Tanium, but that's just so cool. I, I just have to say that. <laughs> I don't have to know how Tanium works at all. That is somebody else's job to say, here is the actions, here are the sensors, here's everything that I'm gonna make available. As an IT agent, I just need to come in and say, what is the data that I need? And I can just with a couple of clicks, grab that data. Another thing on here, so again, coming back to the reboot conversation, um, I've worked on service desks before, and you ask an end user, well, when's the last time you rebooted your machine? And the answer is always, oh, well, it was a couple of days ago, or I just rebooted this morning. Sometimes you may not trust that answer. So I can come in here and I can query and say, well, when was the last time this machine actually was rebooted? And this is telling us that this machine has not been rebooted in more than three months. So if a user told me I was rebooted last week and now their CPU is running at 100% and I can see, well, last week was a bit of a stretch, again, I can come back here to my configured actions and I could go ahead and I could force it to reboot so now I know when the last time that this was rebooted. Now, there's a deploy software package button. That sounds juicy. This will also take directly from the Tanium Deploy Gallery, whatever software my ServiceNow admin has made available for me as an agent, and it's going to understand to only show me software that is relevant for the operating system of the device that I am looking at. So I can come in here and I can choose from all these Windows packages because this is a Windows machine, and maybe in your environment, you do not allow users to install software on their own device. 
Um, and so there's some free software that they need to come in and they need to be able to request. Um, so for example, if somebody says, I need Chrome on my machine, I'm, I'm using Edge right now, but I really want to use Chrome. That's something I'm more comfortable with. I could come in here, select the latest version of Chrome. And again, in just one click, this is instantly going to send a deploy action through Tanium to that end user's machine, install that Chrome package, and then that software will also be reported back as an installed application the next time the CMDB syncs in here. Man, I tell you what excites me about this is looking at these three buttons, any package in Tanium, any sensor I can query, and software I want to install, this is all customizable. So what I like to tell people is think about your top 10 tickets, right? And just start working down the list. What can we automate the solution for? Put that into a standard Tanium package. And maybe just restarting the service or killing a process is enough here. But we can, like that disk cleanup, maybe we know in our environment there's a particular app that fills the disk. So we can write a package to do that, put it on a button, and we're closing tickets faster. That's remarkable. One thing that you just hit on is the configurability of this. So maybe you don't want to give every single agent the same exact abilities to run every action or to query every sensor or to deploy software packages. So the permissions on this are incredibly granular where you can have different agents working in different teams that have the ability to see different things or to take certain types of actions. Um, for example, maybe my agent should be allowed to deploy software onto end user devices, but I don't want to give them that ability if it's something like a production server. And so if it's a production server, I'm just not even going to see this deploy software package button if I'm a user who's logging in here. So the configurability and the, the amount of granular control that you have for every single agent and every device is remarkable. Well, Brandon, thanks for showing us how Tanium and Power Service now help desk experience with real-time data and remediation. Any other tips as we wrap up here? I would say the the number one thing would be get this installed, start playing around with it. The the amount of power and the capability that has been put in here and the ease of configurability, um, we have tried to make this as simple as possible. Um, any customer can go in and they can install this for free in their ServiceNow environment. Um, so this is something that I think, you know, day one can have an immediate impact on that MTTI and MTTR SLAs. Um, all it takes is just getting this in here and, and starting to use it. Um, it's power that agents in ServiceNow have never had before. Um, so the amount of time that it's going to be able to save and the amount of automation that it can enable is, is just incredible. Thank you so much for this tour. And folks, uh, you heard it from Brandon. Once you have the licensing in place on the Tanium side and the ServiceNow side, these actual integrations to make the two work together are free. They're in the ServiceNow store. And so for those of you who are admins that are watching, check out the other videos in the show notes below for the series of where you can actually go out right now working with your ServiceNow admin and turn this on for your environment. So, Brandon, thank you for this tour. And for our viewers, hey, stay tuned. There's more coming in the ServiceNow integration series. So let's go out there and close some tickets. Go Tanium.